Hello class 10. In this video, we are going to learn about vibrations and you know the different kinds of vibrations. We are going to talk about natural vibrations, uh, damp vibrations, forced vibrations, and then after we are going to talk about resonance. But before we jump into those topics, let us first of all look into the basics of vibrations or oscillations. Like let us see what an amplitude is. Amplitude. When the body say is oscillating or vibrating for that matter, any vibrating body or any oscillating body will have something called its mean position or equilibrium position at which position the body is eventually going to come to rest. Okay. Now, the equilibrium position is generally the in-between position, the position exactly in between the two extremes all right and thereby it is also called the mean position so the distance of the extreme point from the mean position okay is what is called your amplitude and basically it is the maximum distance or maximum displacement of the oscillating or vibrating body so the maximum distance or displacement of a vibrating or oscillating body from its mean position is what is called your amplitude. Alright. Now the second thing is frequency. What is frequency? For a vibrating body, the number of vibrations, complete vibrations in one second. For an oscillating body, the number of complete oscillations in one second is what is called the frequency of oscillation. Now remember, any vibrating body produces sound waves. Okay, so to say, let me say, you know, uh, any vibrating body produces waves. All right. Now, one complete vibration is what generates one complete wave. What is generally referred to as the wavelength of the wave. All right. So, and what is one complete vibration? Say a body starts vibrating from its mean position. So it moves to one of the extremes, comes back to the mean position, goes to the other extreme and comes back again to the mean position. That would be one complete vibration. Okay. Now if you are measuring from one of the extremes, so it starts from the extreme, it reaches the mean, goes to the other extreme, reaches the mean again and comes back to that original position it started from. Okay. That would be one complete vibration. And same for an oscillating body. So remember, one complete vibration is what generates one complete wave. Therefore, the number of waves generated in one second is the frequency of the wave. Now talking about wavelength of any wave, be it a transverse wave or a longitudinal wave, where you have a series of compressions and expansions, compressions and expansions. Okay? So, we already know, you all already know this, okay? The distance between two consecutive maxima is what is called wavelength. Or, we can also define it to be, the distance between two consecutive minima is also wavelength. Also, since this starting from the mean here, this is one complete wave. So, the length of one complete wave, so to say, is what is called the wavelength. Alright? So, this would be half a wavelength or lambda by 2. Now, likewise, talking about a longitudinal wave, which our sound wave is, the distance between two consecutive compressions, as you can see here, the distance between two consecutive compressions, or the distance between two consecutive expansions, is what is called the wavelength of the longitudinal wave, remember. Finally, looking at the relation between frequency, velocity, and wavelength of a wave, which you actually already know. So, just a recap for you all the relation is Vsf into lambda where v of course is the velocity f is the frequency and lambda the wavelength of the wave now in some books you see it written to be v is n lambda where n represents the frequency of the wave so this relation is very very important for you all so don't forget it after looking at the basics regarding a wave let us now focus on the actual things that are there in your syllabus starting with natural vibration now all of us have seen body is vibrating, be it the vibration of the strings of a guitar or any other stringed instrument or the vibration of the membrane of a drum or any other thing vibrating. And we see that in all of these vibrations that we have seen in our real world, 
the amplitude of vibration gradually goes on decreasing be it oscillation if you've seen a pendulum oscillating okay what happens is as you can see the amplitude of the vibration gradually goes on decreasing okay like this okay so we see the amplitude of vibration amplitude of oscillation gradually goes on decreasing and eventually the body comes to a stop now why is this happening in our world this happens because the air present offers a frictional drag or exerts a frictional drag on the oscillating or vibrating body because of which the amplitude of vibration of the body goes on decreasing and eventually the body comes to a stop. So what is natural vibration? The vibration of a body in which case there is no decrease in the amplitude of vibration of the body. So to say if a body starts vibrating the vibration of the body goes on forever. The vibration doesn't stop because its amplitude doesn't go on decreasing. So that kind of a vibration which goes on forever, which actually happens in the absence of an external force is what is called natural vibration. Now what is the external force being exerted in our real world? It is the frictional drag offered by the air like I have already mentioned. So to say natural vibrations only happens in vacuum. Like the membrane of a drum vibrating in vacuum, the string of any stringed instrument vibrating in vacuum, anything vibrating or oscillating in vacuum is an example of natural vibration, remember that. So to say, in case of natural vibration, if we plot a graph of amplitude versus time, okay, the amplitude of the wave generated due to natural vibration would always remain the same or constant and it would go on forever. So this would be the graph for natural vibration. Under the same heading natural vibration, let us look at the vibration of a string and let's discuss about its frequency. Strictly speaking, mind you, a vibrating string in the world we live in, it's not natural vibration, strictly speaking. Why? Because the amplitude of vibration of the string eventually goes on decreasing. Although the amplitude of vibration goes on decreasing, that is the sound it produces, the intensity of it goes on decreasing, but still a vibrating string produces a definite frequency. So we want to see what are the things on which the frequency of vibration of a string is dependent on. So the first thing it's dependent on is its length. And we see that the frequency is inversely proportional to the length of the string. That is, shorter the length, more the frequency. Longer the length, less the frequency. Okay? Let us take the example of a guitar that I have over here. So, you see here, this is the sound it produces. I'm talking about this string, the sixth string, so to say. So, the length of the sixth string extends from this point to the bridge of the guitar. Alright? So, when the length of the string is this long, this is the sound it produces. Now I shorten the length by placing my finger over here. I can also use a keyboard to do that. So when I place my finger over here, the length of the string extends from this point to this point here. So this is the sound. And when I have not placed my finger, the sound is this. When I place my finger, okay, I go on shortening the length so to say you can see you can hear in fact that the, that the frequency goes on increasing it goes towards the higher level so this is what exactly it means Loss, shorter the length more the frequency less of the length higher the frequency likewise the radius, it depends on the radius of the string also. Again, frequency is inverse proportional to the radius. Shorter the, I mean, lesser the radius, more is the frequency. More is the radius, lesser is the frequency. We can take again the help of this guitar to explain this point. Let's look at this sixth string and the first string. Okay? Now you must have noticed, you can see in this guitar also, the first string here, the lowermost string, is the thinnest string and this is the thickest string. So to say, the radius of the sixth string is more, much more in fact, than the radius of the first string. So let us listen to the sound it produces. 
okay a low bass sound and this is high sound okay that is the frequency here is more all right than the frequency over here okay so lesser is the radius higher will be the frequency and more is the radius lesser will be the frequency you can take the example of other strings also other lower strings also so this is the sixth string this is the second string this is a higher frequency of sound than this frequency also the frequency of vibration of the string is dependent on capital T which is the tension of the string and you can see frequency is proportional to the square root of the tension this tells us that more is the tension on the string higher is the frequency lesser is the tension on the string lesser is the frequency let us test that too so we have these keys over here I go on tightening it up so you can see that I loosen it up I further loosen it up Okay, I further loosen it up. Okay. So we see that more is the tension, more is the frequency, and less is the tension, less is the frequency. Now you need to remember the, these things. Okay. And this formula over here, the frequency, so to say, is given by frequency of vibrating string is given by 1 upon 2L square root of capital T divided by pi r squared d. Where small d over here is the density of the string. Okay? So to say pi r squared into d is the mass of the string. Pi r squared is the area of the string. Okay? Multiplied by its density gives us the mass of the string. Let us now plus then look at the different modes of vibration in a string. So we have a string having length L and it is fixed between two rigid ends. Now let us deal with this first piece here. If we plug the string at length L by 2 at this point here, which is length L by 2, half the length. Okay? So if we plug it here, then the kind of vibration that the string is going to execute is up and down like this. So in the first case, so to say what we have is the length, this length is equal to half the wavelength. Because you can see when we plug the string at half the length over here, at this point, this is half a wave that is generated. So therefore, the length L is equal to half the wavelength. Or from here we can write, lambda is 2L. Okay, so what would be the frequency? Say for example, the velocity of the wave that is generated. These are transverse waves that are generated in the string. Whenever you plug a string, the string executes this kind of a motion to and fro up and down. So that is transverse wave. So let us suppose the velocity of the transverse wave is V. So therefore, the frequency, so to say, let me call this F1. Since this is the first mode of vibration. So the frequency for first mode of vibration is F1. So F1 is equal to the velocity of the wave divided by well, since frequency is velocity upon wavelength, this relation from this relation, of course, V is frequency into lambda. So we see frequency is velocity divided by wavelength, and the wavelength here we see is 2L. So this is the value of the frequency for the first mode of vibration. Now, if we plug the string at one fourth the length. Okay, somewhere over here, one fourth the length. Then the kind of vibration that we see the string execute, ex string executing will be this. Okay, there's a second mode of vibration, and by the way, these joints, so to say, these points where we see kind of the wave meeting, these are called the nodes. And these points where the waves are far apart, these are called the antinodes. So these are the nodes over here, alright, so to say you have two nodes, you have three nodes over here and one node at the center. Remember, if we do not count the two nodes at the two fixed ends of the string, then the first mode of vibration has no node at the center. 
at the center meaning in between the two fixed ends of the string. The second mode of vibration has one node at the center and likewise the third mode of vibration has two nodes at the center. And likewise for the fourth mode it will have three nodes at the center. And it goes on like that. So counting the number of nodes in between the two fixed ends or at the center so to say, we can easily draw the picture of the various modes of vibration. So length is equal to wave length itself because it is one complete wave at the length L. So lambda is simply equal to L and therefore if I call this frequency F2 for the second mode of vibration, then F2 is V upon L simply, okay, which can be written as 2V by 2L. Alright, and for the third mode of vibration, like I said, you have two nodes and thereby you draw the picture this way. So here we see L is equal to C. We have one complete wave up to here and half a wave. Alright, so we have three lambda by two waves over here. So three lambda by two. So the length L is equal to three lambda by two. Also to say the lambda, the wave length is equal to two. L by 3, okay, and thereby we have the frequency F3 for the third mode of vibration to be equal to V upon lambda, lambda is this much, so this will be 2L by 3, that 3 can go up here, okay, so the frequency for the third mode of vibration is 3V upon 2L, so to say we see if we take the ratio F1, is to F2 is to F3 then this is equal to V upon 2L is to 2V upon 2L is to 3V upon 2L okay so this comes out to be equal to 1 is to 2 is to 3 so this is the ratio of the Frequency is F1 is to F2 is to F3 which is equal to 1 is to 2 is to 3. So we saw that for the three modes of vibration, this frequency, the third frequency is the highest. Okay, of course you can make out from the number of waves also here. The more the number of waves, the higher the frequency. And it can you can make that out from the value of the frequency also here. So sometimes you will be given pictures like this and you will be asked which one has the highest frequency. Okay, so this one has the highest frequency. Which one has the highest wavelength? This one has the highest wavelength, of course. Okay, because frequency and wavelength, you can make out from this relation also that they are inversely proportional. Okay, frequency and wavelength will be inversely proportional. So, therefore, higher the frequency, lesser will be the wavelength. Remember that. Also, the frequency of the first mode of vibration is called the fundamental frequency. This is called the fundamental or the principal frequency and this the frequency of the second mode of vibration is called the first overtone it's called the first overtone it is also called the first subsidiary all right and the third mode of vibration the frequency for it it's called the second overtone okay and it's also called the second subsidiary now let us also see what are the different modes of vibration of air column of course in an organ pipe or in a flute so when we blow a flute or any kind of an organ pipe what happens the air column inside the flute or the organ pipe it starts vibrating so what I've shown over here is the different modes of vibration of the air column inside the flute or the organ pipe now although these pictures are not needed for you all okay uh, I have shown this picture the different modes of vibration only to help you understand what you only need is you only need this the ratio of the frequency of the different modes of vibration when the organ pipe is open at both ends so if the organ pipe is open at both ends the ratio of the frequencies is 1 is to 2 is to 3 this is what you require now uh, just to give you a rough idea okay this is taught in class 11 if you take science in class 11, you have to study this. So the very basic form of vibration of the air column is like this. Remember, one thing you need to remember here, 
you will always have an antinode at the open ends. Always do remember that. So in every case at the open end you see there is an antinode. So we have an antinode is the most basic form of vibration. So here we see since if this is a minimum, this is a maximum. So the distance between the minimum and the maximum is lambda by 2. Alright, and if the length of the pipe is L, then L over here is lambda by 2. Or lambda is 2L as you can see. Therefore the frequency of the first mode of vibration is V upon 2L, where V is the velocity of the wave that is generated. So we see F1 is V upon 2L. Likewise, the second mode of vibration is like this. You still have an antinode at the open end as you can see. Okay. So this is the distance between two minima. Consecutive minima. So therefore L is lambda. This length is L. So L is lambda. Lambda is L so to say. Therefore F2 is V upon 2L which of course can be written as 2V by 2L. So the frequency of the second mode of vibration is 2V by 2L. And we come to the third mode of vibration. Okay. Which is like this. You still have antinodes at the open ends. So lamb L is equal to 3 lambda by 2 because you see from here to here the distance of two consecutive minima is lambda and you have a distance, extra distance from one minimum to a maximum. So therefore the total length is 3 lambda by 2. Okay, so lambda is 12 by 3, so F3 is V of 1, 12 by 3. Okay, so F3 can be as 3V by 2L. So when we find the ratio, we get what is the ratio. You don't need to go into these details, remember, like I already mentioned. What you only need to remember is the ratio of the frequencies for different modes of vibration when the organ pipe is open at both ends is 1 is equal to 3. Now, looking at the modes of vibration in an organ pipe, of course, okay, when one end is closed, one end of the organ pipe is closed. Let me tell you at the very beginning again that here also you need not go into the details like this. Okay, what you only need is you only need the ratio of the frequencies. Okay, ratio of the frequencies for different modes of vibration of the air column in an organ pipe when the organ pipe has its one end closed. So we will see that the ratio of the frequencies is 1 is to 3 is to 5. So just to give you an idea about how we get this ratio, I'm showing you this. Alright, but it's not important for you all to remember. Now do remember, whenever there is a closed end, you will always have a node at the closed end. So the most basic form of vibration of the air column inside an organ pipe whose one end is closed is like this. Okay, now this is the distance from one maximum to a node, to the mean position so to say. So that length is lambda by 4. So therefore L the length of the pipe is equal to lambda by 4 or lambda is 4L. So the first mode of vibration, the fundamental frequency so to say F1 is V upon 4L. Likewise, this is the second mode of vibration. The second mode of vibration, again we see there is a node at the closed end. Okay, and in between you will have one node. Here no nodes in between. Now in between the pipe itself there is one node here. Okay, so L is 3 lambda by 4. Why? Because this much is lambda by 4. Another lambda by 4 that makes it 2 lambda by 4 and this is 3 lambda by 4. So L is 3 lambda by 4. So lambda is 4L by 3. So F2 is equal to V upon 4L by 3 and thereby the frequency of the second mode of vibration is 3V upon 4L. Now the third mode of vibration is like this. You have a node here. You have no nodes in between. Two, one node in between you have two nodes in between now. Alright, so this is lambda by 4, 2 lambda by 4, 3 lambda by 4, 4 lambda by 4, 5 lambda by 4. So therefore L is 5 lambda by 4, so lambda is 4L by 5 and thereby you get F3 to be 5V upon 4L. So when you take the ratio, you get V upon 4L is to 3V upon 4L is to 5V upon 4L and thereby 1 is to 3 is to 5.